Wow, I just love talking about the brain. Today I'm going to talk about the frontal lobe, its functions, what it does, and how it affects dementia. My name is Deborah Costu, and I'm your host for Answers About Alzheimer's and the Certified Master Dementia Strategist course. We are dedicated to global education on how to properly care for someone with Alzheimer's or dementia. Dementia is my passion. For those of you who are new to me, I just want to let you know that my experience comes from my own personal experiences. My mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and I believe that she also had undiagnosed Parkinson's. I've taught the highest level of education for the Alzheimer's Association for many, many years. I owned a home care agency for almost two decades and I have many, many other certifications in Alzheimer's and dementia. So my credentials are long, but what I will tell you is that even with all of my training, I came to the conclusion that every training I've taken would not produce the results that myself or my team of caregivers needed to be successful with their person with dementia. I've always left every training without the practical skills and exact knowledge to make a significant change. So I made it my mission to create the end all of courses. I developed a program where participants will learn over, are you ready? 275 exact phrases of things to say and not to say to someone with dementia. The Certified Master Dementia Strategist course teaches us how to come up with our own solutions and we cover every single possible scenario and then we talk about the exact things you need to do and say for every single one. It's truly amazing. But you can get more information on that at my website, answersaboutalz.org. On that website, you will find an entire list of everything that is covered in the course. And if you're not quite ready for the main course, maybe you just want to start out with a side dish. Ah, get it? I'm so funny. Um, I do have some quick, compact courses for you for quick results for you that are also available on that website. But anyway, today, I can't wait to talk about the frontal lobe of the brain. I think the frontal lobe is my favorite to talk about because of its complexity. The frontal lobe is located behind your uh, forehead and above your eyes in the front of your skull. The brain weighs approximately three pounds and it is suspended in fluid called your cerebral spinal fluid. As you probably know, the different parts of the brain are responsible for different things. They have different functions. However, in order for each lobe of the brain to function, it must rely on other portions and lobes of the brain to complete a task. No one lobe can function without the others. So as much as they function separately, they also function together. Fascinating. So, the frontal lobe is so important in our daily activities, our perception of the world and our surroundings. The frontal lobe of the brain has many, many different responsibilities. One of the functions is expressive language. So when you think about what expressive language means, it's how we express ourselves and express our emotions. So if the frontal lobe is damaged, and we're not able to express how we feel, that is extremely frustrating because if we're afraid or we're having a problem and we're not able to tell someone and we're maybe not able to show facial expressions like masked face, I have a whole video just on that. It's incredible. How are we supposed to know what a person is feeling if they can't make facial expressions? So between expressing language and facial emotional recognition, that can really impair caregiving because as the caregiver, you can't read a person's face or body language, language, language. <laughs> where as if you're dealing with a cognitively intact person, 
you could tell maybe that they're not feeling well or they're upset or they have a headache. So this can hamper our caregiving abilities. It also might make us feel that the person that we're caring for isn't appreciative of what we do for them because they're not able to express that. Make sense? Is that a dementia breakthrough for you? Put DBT in the comments below if that's a dementia breakthrough for you. The frontal lobe is also responsible for the fact um, that we can control our reactions and responses to things, which means that a cognitively intact person like you or I, we would be able to hold back from making a rude comment to someone. So let's say you're in Walmart and there's somebody who's got really, really, really bad body odor in front of you. You might roll your eyes, step back a little bit, but you're not gonna tap the person on the shoulder and say, Jesus Christ, you stink like a nasty ass skunk. Why don't you take a shower before you go out in public, you big jerk? A person with dementia whose frontal lobe has been under attack for years cannot control their responses. And they might actually just blurt that out to somebody. So the next time your person with dementia says something absolutely rude or horrible to you, you have to stop and think their frontal lobe is damaged. They don't have any restraint. And the other thing that the frontal lobe does is it lets us know that there are consequences to actions. So the person who might tell someone that they stink doesn't understand that the person they're talking to even has any feelings. They don't understand consequences for actions. They don't understand the feelings of others. People with dementia are not intentionally trying to hurt your feelings. They don't understand. And they can't control responses. They can't control their emotions. They also don't understand why you're getting upset. Why did you just get mad at me? They have no idea that they've hurt your feelings. They have no idea that they're being mean. That's why we, as the caregiver, have to turn on our spam filters and put on our suit of armor and not take these comments and actions personally. And I know this is hard. I've been there. It's hard. It's really hard. But if you're a dare giver, you're going to keep trying and you're going to keep doing it. You're not going to take things personally and you're going to keep educating yourself and upping your skills and upping your knowledge so that things hurt less and less and things become easier and easier. I'm here for you. Go to the website, get some more training, be a dare giver, be the dare giver that I know you can be. Another function of the frontal lobe is our ability to initiate. And that means our frontal lobe controls the ability to get started on a task or an activity. This is something that I see constantly posted and questions regarding this. My mom won't do any activities. She won't take a shower. She doesn't change her clothes. This is all part of initiation, right? You can't say, mom, go take a shower. Mom cannot initiate getting up and taking a shower. You have to help them get started. You have to show them physically, show them the process and the steps. Our frontal lobe is all about steps and planning and the executive functioning of the frontal lobe. It's not that they don't want to do anything. They can't do anything. It's not that they don't want to do a task. They need help getting started. They can't initiate. They'll just sit there and stare at a blank wall. And you wonder why they don't turn the TV on because they don't even understand how to start that process any longer. It's really so sad. We have to stop saying that the person with dementia won't do this or won't do that, or they refuse to do this, or they refuse to do that, because that's not the case. They no longer have the skills to initiate. I hope that you found this very interesting and eye-opening about the frontal lobe of the brain and its purpose for our existence. By the way, 
I have two pictures here, but I just realized they're not for this video. They're for the hippocampus that I'm going to do next. So anyway, frontal lobe, we still love you, even though you're damaged. I'm Deborah Castu. See you next time.